Welcome to the first episode of the Digital Marketing Kumite. We're putting Shopify up against WooCommerce and it's going to get epic. There can only be one winner. So let's get into this video. What's up everybody? My name is Brandon Brashears. I'm a digital marketer. I have a digital marketing agency and if you are trying to grow your business with digital marketing, if you want to sell things online, if you want to talk about PPC or SEO or social media marketing, this is a great channel for that. Today is the first ever Digital Marketing Kumite. And if you're not familiar with sweet 80s movies, the Kumite was from Bloodsport, where Jean-Claude Van Damme, he fought and won the competition, which was brutal. So in the spirit of that awesome movie, let's roll the intro. <laughs> So here's the way this is going to work. We're going to have different rounds that talk about different aspects and features of both Shopify and WooCommerce. I think that they're actually both really good platforms. I have sites that are both on Shopify and also on WooCommerce. And so depending on what your end use of application, what your skill level is, that's going to determine whether or not you'll be, I think, choosing one or the other. So hopefully by the end of this video, you're going to have a clear idea of which software you should be using and which one will work best for your current situation. Now, I think that in today's um, atmosphere of, of digital marketing, Shopify is actually a lot more popular right now than WooCommerce is. Now, WooCommerce was the, the clear winner a few years ago in that they were kind of the only option out there. And so, so many um, businesses have WordPress as their um, site and things. So that's why I think it was kind of the clear winner in the past. But since Shopify has come along, a lot of things have changed. And so we're going to talk about a few things. First, we're going to go over the basics. So here's the basics. First things first, Shopify is a all done for you hosted platform. You can customize the site. You can add what are called apps for any kind of customization for like recurring billing and things like that. Shopify is ex more expensive on the kind of outset where you're going to have monthly fee, um, depending on what you're looking to do from basic all the way up to enterprise. But Shopify is really built for one purpose only, which is to sell things. It's not a, the best um, solution for content, in my opinion. So if you are trying to grow a content platform and then also sell things on top of it, you might want to actually have WordPress as a subdomain or, you know, it depends on, on what you're looking to do. But really, I think that that's one, the only area in general that Shopify is lacking in is from the content perspective. We'll get into all of these other features here in just a second. But WooCommerce is a free open source um, WordPress plugin. So WordPress is open, open source, but um, WooCommerce is a e-commerce plugin that lets you sell things on your WordPress site. And it is very customizable. It's out of the box, not super user friendly. So if you're not familiar with WordPress, it's gonna be difficult. There will be a learning curve involved. Um, but it isn't too hard that you can't learn. There's so many tutorials out there on anything that you need to know built around WooCommerce. Now, there are a few drawbacks initially to out of the box with WooCommerce, and we'll get into these in more detail with each one of these sections here. But it out of the box doesn't have a bunch of features. And if you want to do things like recurring payments or you know have FedEx integration or shipping integration or bundling your products and just all kinds of things, you're going to have to pay for a subscription, which is typically an annual subscription. And you're going to pay anywhere from, you know, 25 bucks to typically two or 300 bucks a year to access these different um, plugins that are going to give you the functionality that you need to create a really custom store. So let's get in the very first thing that we're going to be talking about. So round one is ease of use. And there are some serious differences between Shopify and WooCommerce in ease of use. Number one, Shopify is hosted for you. It's done for you. It's easy to set up out of the box. It's easy to place your pixels in. It's easy to get basically anything that you need to do, setting up discounts inside of there, setting up recurring payments, adding plugins. All of this is super easy, super seamless. And as a result, 
you don't have to be technical at all. So if you can build with a drag and drop builder, you can make a Shopify site. And there's tons of themes out there that you can buy to make it look custom based on what you're selling and things. And it just is set up and optimized so well. I mean, the cart checkout process is really seamless and easy to use. You place your pixel in inside um, Shopify and they'll all automatically add um, standard conversion events like checkout process and initiate checkout and um, add, add to cart and all these other things. There's already cart abandoned emails in there. The analytics are easy to read and understand. Um, and it just is an all, all around, it's a great platform for selling things, which typically in the past was a very complicated process. Um, setting up your payments through Shopify payments is very simple. Shopify payments partners with Stripe. So um, it's a reliable, easy to use payment processor. The sites look great. They load lightning quick and um, you get the benefit of having a kind of done for you package. So ease of use, Shopify is great. Let's talk about WooCommerce for ease of use. Now, WordPress is an amazing platform. So many websites are hosted on WordPress, but the problem with that is that it's open source. So that being the case, you're gonna have to do everything yourself or you're gonna have to hire somebody to do it. So if you're not familiar with WordPress, it is complicated and difficult. Um, if you're not able to set up your hosting, if you're not able to do you know, installing your themes or customizing your themes, it's just a lot of coding and there's a lot of things that you can customize on the site. And that being the case, you know, there's just so many things that can go wrong. Since WordPress uses plugins, which are oftentimes open source, if you're not keeping everything up to date, that creates potential security vulnerabilities and things. Um, I still have a WordPress site, maverickdigitalmarketing.com. My agency website is WordPress. I sell things on WooCommerce through that WordPress site. And um, it just takes a lot more work and a lot more time to understand how to do these things because it's not as simple as you know, dragging and dropping things. And, um, you know, you can customize the cart checkout process and it just takes a lot, a lot more finessing and a lot more handling in, in my opinion. So for that reason, I think that round number one for ease of use goes to Shopify every single time. Shopify hands down is the easier to use and for novices or beginners, it really makes sense to go with Shopify. Let's talk about round two now, which is themes and flexibility. So Shopify overall has a bunch of themes that are there already. If you want somebody to code something inside of Shopify for you, make a custom installation, you're gonna have to find a developer who's skilled at Shopify. Um, it's very difficult to learn, in my, in my opinion, I'm a digital marketer, I'm not a coder, so I'm gonna make that, that statement right there. But um, for me, trying to do any kind of customization inside of Shopify is very difficult. And um, I think that typically you should hire a professional to do that for you. So if you want something that's completely custom, um, Shopify is probably not gonna do it, but with all of the apps that they have, it makes it so that it's easy to, you know, make your site as custom as possible. You can add um, pop-ups and you can use things like Zipify to make landing pages. And, you know, you can really find all of the tools that you need to. The only thing that I will say that is a little bit difficult is the checkout process. If you're trying to collect more information than the standard checkout process, you're going to have to buy an app to get more information and customize the fields and things like that. So the customization from the flexibility standpoint is not the best instead of Shopify. And so sometimes you'll find that it's difficult to get things to work and it's going to have to take a kind of a weird solution to make that work. Another thing that's kind of difficult too is that if you're using Infusionsoft, um, or other payment gateways like that, it, it makes it a little bit more difficult. So I would say make sure that you're just using, you know, specifically the, the infrastructure inside of Shopify, like Stripe Payments or one of their payment processors, um, just because it makes it a lot easier to work within what they have. Now with WooCommerce, when it comes to themes and usability or flexibility rather, uh, you have really the sky's the limit. So this is great in my opinion um, it just, again, takes, you have to know how to do things inside of WordPress, but if you've already made the decision that you're going to use WordPress, um, it's actually not too hard to find tutorials. WordPress is really common, um, as far as how to do things or how to code things and how to co code custom things. You're not going to need to know that much, in my opinion, to fix or customize a WordPress site against, for example, 
custom customizing a Shopify site. Um, and I know that sounds weird because it's coding and stuff, but uh, if you have some WordPress experience, it's not very difficult to learn how to make things as custom as, as you'd like them to. So I think that being said, round two probably goes to WooCommerce just slightly in that it is really, really customizable and a lot more flexible, I think. And especially if you have checkout processes that are a little bit more intense or you want more things to happen in the checkout, it makes it you know, a little bit easier to use WooCommerce. But I only slightly there. And um, Shopify is really great in that you can make it look custom and the, the themes are, are beautiful and, and, they're, and they're great too. So let's talk about now how products are displayed and showed inside of your WordPress theme or your Shopify site. So first off, Shopify comes great with galleries, image galleries, video galleries, and things like that. If you want to have like zoom on your products or additional features, you're gonna have to buy another app. You'll find this is a recurring theme and that might be a barrier to entry to some people. If you want to have you know a custom looking product or if you want a different experience, it's gonna cost you typically the theme. I mean, the, the additional apps aren't super expensive, but they definitely add up and they're always on a monthly fee. So if you're like me, you probably have, you know, 50 other web subscriptions and you're not super excited about adding even more on top of everything. So that's just one note there. I think that the mobile optimization of Shopify is beautiful, it's wonderful, and it looks great inside of there. Now contrast that with WooCommerce. I think WooCommerce also has great products and it's gonna depend on the theme that you're using. But for the most part, it, it integrates really seamlessly, and especially if you're using an e-commerce e uh, enabled theme, it's gonna work and look great. In all, this is really a draw. There's not really one that looks better than the other, um, in my opinion. And so I, th I think that it's pretty much even here. You really have the same features and the same things that you can use in both. So it's a draw in round three. Round four, let's talk about payment gateways. Payment gateways are very, very important because it lets you collect money. Now, most people that I know use Stripe or Authorize.net. Um, I use Infusionsoft payments and Infusionsoft's um, payment processor for some things. Um, so it just really depends on the business that you have, what you're looking to do. For most people, if you have Stripe, uh, Infusion, I'm sorry, if you use Shopify payments powered by Stripe, that works great. The fees are competitive um, and it's very, very simple to use and set up. If you've ever tried to set up an authorized.net account, and it's difficult in general. It's not the easiest thing to do. So that, that was just my experience. I don't know if your experience was different or if they changed it recently, but the one time that I tried to set up an authorized.net payment before Infusionsoft added their payment gateway, it was a nightmare and I couldn't get it to work for the life of me. So. Things have gotten a lot more user friendly in the past, in recently, but that's to say that if you set up Shopify payments, all you have to do is enter your bank uh, information, your tax ID, and then you're off to the races to collect payments. It doesn't get any easier than that. So the th only thing is that Shopify payments are only available in select countries. So depending on where you are in the world, you need to make sure that Shopify payments is actually possible for you. If that's not the possible um, for you, then WooCommerce is a great option. Now, WooCommerce uh, accepts basically all the same um, payment processors and actually several more than uh, Shopify does, but uh, it's not a one-click setup that's easy. You can use Stripe to set up your, shop, your WooCommerce payments under settings, um, and it's not very difficult. I set it up in about you know, 30 minutes or so um, when I was setting it up. It's pretty simple to do. You can run test transactions and everything like that. So from that perspective, it's actually not very difficult at all. So I would like to know what, what are your kind of personal opinions on that? In general, it depends. If you have something that you really, really like, then um, I would go with that if, as long as it's supported. And typically that'll be done in WooCommerce. You'll have every kind of payment processor that you can use. Um, and then if you just want something that's easy, a couple clicks to get done, then Shopify is going to be the winner. So this kind of depends on you as to who will be the winner on this one. Do you have the skill level to set up a payment processor gateway or do you not have the, that skill set? It's really not that difficult. All you have to do is 
click a couple of buttons, put in an API key and a secret API key, and then you're good to go. So you, you have to be the judge on this round, unfortunately. Let's talk about the checkout process. Now, the checkout process is so important because number one, you need to have an easy to use checkout to you know get your customers to go from, hey, I want this product to, okay, here's how I pay. And if you have, let's start with Shopify first. Shopify is seamless. I love Shopify's cart. You can have a one page checkout. It's very simple, it's mobile optimized. If you have PayPal integrations or Apple Pay integrations, it works seamlessly too. So uh, it's not a difficult thing to use at all. And I think that it's great for the beginner person who doesn't wanna code a custom checkout, it's it's the best. And so I, I think that just the simplicity of it. Also, it used to be that the checkout process was hosted on Shopify server. So it would take you and it would basically provide a gap in the pixel. You couldn't pixel that process and then you'd end up on the confirmation. So that was kind of troubling, but that's not the case anymore. They've made it now that it's all on your domain. So now you're able to pixel the whole process and that's huge. That would have been a disqualifier in the past, but now that that's available, um, it's, it's a wonderful thing. So that being said, WooCommerce does also have single page checkouts that you can do as add-ons but the, almost all of the, the themes that come, they add the product to cart, and then you have to go and do additional work to find the cart, and then uh, commence the checkout process. For that reason, you're gonna get, unless you can fix that, you're gonna get drops in conversion, just because you're asking your traffic to do more steps. And for me, I think Shopify is the clear winner here. In this next round, let's talk security. Security is so important. You don't want your customers to have a bad process, and you also don't want your site to be unsecured and it can get hacked and you could lose it. Okay, so let's talk number one, Shopify. So Shopify is hosted for you. You don't have a hosting solution. And for that reason, they take care of everything. So if you're not technical, if you don't know how to keep your WordPress installation up to date, or your plugins inst up, up to date, or your latest version of PHP up to date, then this is going to be the solution for you. It is very secure. They have encryption, they have SSL for you, and it allows you to just have a done for you, very secure process. There's only so much level of security though that you can have, right? So we can only do all of these different measures. And all of the measures that you can do in Shopify, you can do on your own. So if you're technical and you understand how to do these security measures, then you're gonna be okay in WordPress. Here's the thing though, most entrepreneurs that are just starting an online store, if you don't have any background, you're not gonna know all of the things that you need to be looking out for. And for that reason, WooCommerce is a little bit difficult. So if you don't have the knowledge to make sure that you're gonna be constantly up to date, that you're gonna be secure, um, then Shopify is going to be the clear winner here. Otherwise, it's a tie. We can only do so much. We can only have SSL and encryption and you know a, a secure payment processor. And if, if you have all of those things, there's really no winner but just having that managed for you by teams that are professional and that they understand this, I think that that makes Shopify the winner here. The next round, let's talk about SEO. SEO is so important because you're able to index your site um, and get organic traffic, which we would love to get organic traffic to our site if possible, right? You don't have to pay for traffic. Now I'm a paid traffic guy, so I don't typically focus or worry about SEO too much, which is probably a big weakness, um, but I like scalable, dependable traffic that I can drive to, that I can control that funnel, turn it on and off and things. So um, that being said, in that preface that I give you, I still think SEO is very important. Now, Shopify doesn't have the level of detail that um, WordPress and WooCommerce does. And so you can't, for example, um, create sitemaps and you can't do um, all the additional metadata editing and things that you can do inside of um, WordPress with like a, a plugin like Yoast SEO plugin, for example. So for this reason, I think from an SEO perspective, you're able to control a lot more things. And if you're good at SEO, you obviously know this, um, but if you're thinking about, hey, I want to get as much organic traffic as possible, I think that WooCommerce lets you squeeze more out from the SEO perspective. So. This is definitely a WooCommerce win in this round. 
The next round, let's talk about support. This one is actually an easy no-brainer one because only one of these platforms has support. Now, recently I did, so I have a uh, Shopify partners account and I build Shopify sites for people. And I did have a client who had a transaction that got flagged as um, potentially fraudulent, right? And so they were trying to get money from Shopify. They knew for, for certain it wasn't a fraudulent account. So they were trying to get in touch with Shopify. There is support with Shopify. You can get a phone number to call, you can chat with them. It does take some time though. Um, the most recent experience was actually pretty poor customer service experience with Shopify, which is a bummer because otherwise I've had great experience with them. But I think that the, something is better than nothing. WooCommerce has no support because it's WordPress. And so you're on your own. You have, you know, if you have hosting company, they'll support you. But that depends on the hosting. So if you want support and you're going to do WooCommerce, you're going to need to use something like Liquid Web, which has wonderful support that they can help you with. So that being said, this round of support and technical support is gonna go to Shopify, just because they have actual support that you can talk and text and chat with and things. The next and final round that we're gonna talk about is pricing. So Shopify has three levels that you can buy online. The first is beginner, which is $29 a month. The next is standard, which is $79 a month. And then the last is $2.99 a month for advanced. And, you know, I think that most every business could just use the standard or basic um, when you get into needing a lot more in terms of payment processing or volume of sales and things, then you're going to look at advanced or um, even beyond that so that you can get better pricing and things. So let's talk, though, about WooCommerce's pricing. And WooCommerce is free to begin, but you're going to have to add things on just because the out of box beginner thing is not going to do it for you typically in almost every case. So you're going to have to add stuff on. It's going to depend on what you want to do. If you're going to do recurring payments or if you're going to do product bundles or if you're going to do um, abandoned cart email software, you know, whatever you're going to need to add on here to help make your, your WooCommerce installation something that's equivalent to Shopify, I think that it's going to just depend on what you need. But for the most part on pricing, I think that it goes obviously to WooCommerce because it's free, but again, it's going to depend on your specific installation and that base Shopify pricing isn't just the base Shopify pricing. If you want to have some of these additional features too, then you're going to have to pay for those apps as well. So let's see who won and who ended up on top with this first ever digital marketing community. So Shopify was actually the clear winner here, winning five rounds, having one tie, and then WooCommerce winning three rounds. So I would love to know what you think though. What is your favorite? And I think it really depends on your skill level. If you've always used WordPress, you're so comfortable in it, it's like second language to you, then probably WooCommerce would be better. You're gonna be able to do more things with it. You're probably already running WordPress installations and so you have hosting and everything in place. So adding a Shopify installation on top of it wouldn't make sense. But I would love to know what you think and which is your favorite. Comment below and let me know if I'm crazy. But congratulations, Shopify here. You won the Digital Marketing Kumite. I'd also love to know what other kind of software services and products would you like me to review? So um, I'm gonna hopefully be doing this as a recurring segment. Be sure to subscribe. If you like this video, if you wanna grow your digital marketing, be sure to subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, and be sure to leave a comment. Thanks so much, everybody. I'll see you on the next video. Have a great day.